Hello students, in this video lecture I am going to discuss what is a partial order relation and some related examples. Now uh, coming to what is a partial order relation, now when you talk of a partial order relation then there are two things in, uh, that you should have in hand with you and those two things are you must have a set. The set which I am considering is uh, a, a set P. This is just a notation. It can be any underlying set which I am denoting by P. And the second thing you must have in hand with you is a binary relation. So I am denoting my binary relation by less than equal to. Although in general when you talk of a binary relation then a binary relation is always denoted by uh, capital letter R. Something like this. But uh, since we are talking of a partial order relation. So uh, the most common notation for a partial order relation is uh, this which I am taking less than equal to where this less than equal to doesn't mean the usual uh, less than equal to sign the usual sense in which we understand uh, less than equal to but this is just a notation for now but this less than equal to can stand for anything it can stand for inclusion relation or any other relation and in some uh, cases it might even stand for the usual less than equal to relation but for, no for now for this particular definition the underlying set that I am taking is a set, uh, a set which I am denoting by P which is just again another notation and uh, the relation binary relation that I am taking is uh, the relation less than equal to. Now coming to what is a partial order relation on the set P. Now when you talk of a partial order relation on a set P then there are three properties that a partial order relation must uh, satisfy uh, that there are three properties uh, that a uh, uh, binary relation must uh, uh, satisfy uh, for uh, it to be a partial order relation so if less than equal to has to be a partial order relation on the set p the three properties that it must satisfy are that it, uh, it must satisfy reflexivity which means that less than equal to must be reflexive it must satisfy anti-symmetry which means that less than equal to must be anti-symmetric and it must satisfy transitivity which means that less than equal to this relation must be transitive now what do you mean by saying that a relation is reflexive a relation less than equal to a binary relation less than equal to is said to be reflexive if every element in the underlying set is related to itself which means that if you pick up any element a belonging to p uh, take any element a belonging to p then a must be related to a so every element must be related to itself this must happen for all the elements of the underlying set p if this happens then you say that the binary relation less than equal to is uh, reflexive or reflexivity is satisfied now coming to the second thing when do you say that anti-symmetry is satisfied or when do you say that a binary relation less than equal to is anti-symmetric a binary relation less than equal to is said to be anti-symmetric if uh, when you pick up any two elements A and B belonging to the underlying set such that A is related to B and B is related to A then this must together imply that A is equal to B. If this happens then you say that the relation less than equal to is anti-symmetric or anti-symmetry is satisfied. Now coming to the third thing when do you say that a relation uh, less than equal to uh, or a binary relation less than equal to rather is uh, transitive or when is transitivity satisfied uh, the relation the the property of transitivity is satisfied or the binary relation less than equal to is said to be transitive if uh, when you pick up any three elements a b and c belonging to p if uh, such that uh, a is related to b and b is the first is related to the second and the second is related to the third then this must together imply that the first should be related to the third if this happens then you say that transitivity is satisfied or the relation less than equal to is a transitive relation now if all the three properties are satisfied if reflexivity is satisfied if uh, anti-symmetry is satisfied if transitivity is satisfied which means that if the binary relation is uh, binary uh, given binary uh, relation less than equal to if it is reflexive if it is uh, anti-symmetric as well as uh, transitive if all the three properties are satisfied then you say that the relation less than equal to is a partial order uh, relation on the underlying set P and in that case P is said to be a partially ordered set or uh, sometimes uh, I have written it on the screen already you can see it's called a partially ordered set and sometimes uh, you just call it an ordered set rather than saying a partially ordered set or sometimes in short you call it a PO set or a PO set and this is the notation that you use P less than equal to so that was the definition of a 
partial order uh, relation and a partially ordered set now coming to a few examples related to the uh, partial order relation now let me take my underlying set p to be n the set of naturals or the set of natural numbers and let me take less than equal to the binary relation less than equal to to be the usual less than equal to relation the usual sense in which we understand uh, the less than equal to sign which means that uh, uh, i'm saying that uh, if you pick up any two uh, natural numbers n and m belonging to n because we are in the set of naturals the underlying set is the set of naturals so if you pick up any two naturals n and m belonging to n then uh, i say that n is related to m if uh, if you have either n must be if if either n is strictly less than m or n is equal to m if one of these two conditions happens then you say that n is less than equal to m so here the less than equal to that we are taking the binary relation that we are taking is the usual uh less than equal to relation or the usual sense in which we understand less than equal to sign now let me find out whether uh, p is a uh, po relation po a partially ordered set with respect to this binary relation or not yes it is you can verify all the three properties one by one first of all uh, less than equal to is reflexive why because every natural number n is equal to itself in the underlying set every element is equal to itself if, uh, because and because the uh, natural numbers uh, uh, we have just defined the natural numbers will be related if they are if either one natural number two natural numbers will be related if one if the first if the if one natural number is strictly less than the other or they are equal so now because the condition of equality is being satisfied by all the natural numbers so i can say that every natural number n is related to itself so reflexivity is satisfied for all the elements uh, of the underlying set then anti symmetry is also being satisfied because if there are two natural numbers n and m such that n is less than equal to m and m is less than equal to n where here uh, less than equal to we are defining as the usual less than equal to sign then by the property of natural numbers n has to be equal to m which means uh, that anti symmetry is being satisfied if a is related to b and b is related to a then this must imply a is equal to b so anti symmetry is satisfied and the third property is also uh, being satisfied which means transitivity is also being satisfied because if you uh, pick up uh, uh, if you pick up any uh, three elements uh, uh, n m k uh, belonging to Uh, the set of naturals. If you if you take any three natural numbers, and uh, if you have that n is less than equal to m, and if m is less than equal to k, uh, there is an overlapping of the text over here. So I'm writing everything over here. So if n is less than equal to m, and if m is less than equal to k, then this uh, uh, together, uh, when you take these two uh, things into consideration, then this uh, together implies that n is less than equal to k. If the first natural number is uh less than equal to the second and if the second natural number is less than equal to the third then obviously the first natural number is less than equal to the, the third and this is nothing but transitivity so transitivity is being satisfied which means that p less than equal to is very much a partially ordered set or a po set uh and uh, so uh this is an example here this this first example is an example of a a uh, set which is a partially ordered set the set that we took was the set of naturals and uh, uh, the relation in, in general the set that we take is p and the relation that you take is less than equal to but for this particular case uh, p was your n and less than equal to was the usual less than equal to sign so we found that it came out to be a partial order relation now one thing that has to be noted in this regard is that if i keep uh, uh, my underlying set to be same n but i change my uh, binary relation and i make it uh, strict uh, strictly less than instead of strictly less than equal to i make it strictly less than uh, now let me find out whether uh, uh, with this as my binary relation whether the set of naturals will still be a partial order uh, partially ordered set or not you can see that the condition of reflexivity will not be satisfied anymore if you take uh, your relation to be a uh, strict uh, less than strictly less than relation because if you pick up any uh, natural number uh, n then uh, na any natural number can't be strictly less than itself so this means that the uh, natural numbers are not uh, related to each other by this particular binary relation which means that this is not uh, uh, a partially ordered relation because it fails to be reflexive so uh, so we have seen uh, from this particular example that um, uh if you even if you keep the underlying set 
uh, n uh, which is n in this case to be the same but if you change the binary relation if you if here uh, you take the binary relation as the usual as n equal to sign and here if you take your binary relation as the uh, strictly less than sign then in this case it will be a po set but in this case it will fail to be a po set because reflexivity is not satisfied anymore so this uh, is one thing that has to be noted over here that if you change the relation binary relation uh, even though you might uh, keep your uh, underlying set as same still uh, uh, that might uh, bring about uh, changes in the structure of the uh, set it might be a, it might be a po set it might not uh, remain a po set anymore with the, the change in the relation now coming to the uh, next example now in the next example i'm taking uh, my set x i'm taking a set x and then the first example was from the set of number systems as in this case uh, the second example is the uh, an example from a set of sets a collection of sets or a set of sets so i'm taking my set x uh, to be 1 2 3 let's say it has three elements and let me take p to be uh, the power set of s the set of all subsets of x now since there are uh, three elements in this set so in the power set there are going to be 2 to the power 3 which is 8 elements because we know that in general if there are n elements in a set then in the power set there are 2 to the power n elements uh, if, they, if there are n elements in a set then uh, the in the power set there are 2 to the power n elements so uh, this is the formula so just by using that formula you have because there are three elements in uh, in the set x so there are 2 to the power 3 which is 8 elements in the power set and what are those uh, 8 elements this is how the power set is denoted so what are those 8 elements the first is the first is phi or the empty set which is also denoted like this sometimes then the set of one uh, set uh, having one elements that is singletons then sets having two elements which are these and the set uh, x itself which is uh, the set one two three these are the eight elements and now uh, what i'm doing is i'm defining the relation less than equal to on this set as the inclusion relation inclusion relation means that if you pick up any two uh, elements of this set the elements of this set are sets themselves so if you pick up any two sets in p we say any two sets a and b in p then we say that a is related to b if a is contained in b if a is included in b if a is contained in b then uh, we can see that uh, p less than equal to or uh, the power set of uh, x so with respect to this inclusion relation is uh, a po set y because uh, three properties are satisfied and what are those three properties reflexivity uh, anti symmetry and transitivity are satisfied and how are they satisfied every set is contained in itself so every set is related to itself this is true for all the elements of the uh, all the sets inside uh, p which is the power set of x if a is contained in b if a and b are two sets and if a is contained in b and if b is contained in a then a is equal to b these are results from uh, set theory all these are results from set theory that every set is contained in itself if a is contained in b and if b is contained in a if two sets behave like this then um, uh, the just sets are equal so anti symmetry is satisfied and uh, so, the, so this is another way of writing anti-symmetry and the third is transitivity transitivity is also satisfied which means that if i pick up any three uh, sets a b and c belonging to p and uh, uh, if uh, they are like this that if uh, the first is contained in the second and the second is contained in the third then the first is contained in the third this is by results of set theory uh, so transitivity is satisfied since so all the three conditions are satisfied so p less than equal to is a partially ordered set or the power set of x uh, with respect to the inclusion relation is a partially ordered set in fact uh, uh, if you take any collection uh, if if i if i take uh, a to be any collection of sets i am denoting my collection of sets like this uh, if a is any collection of sets any set of sets which means a is a, uh, a is a set whose elements are themselves set and if i define uh, inclusion relation on it then this will always come out to be a po set so uh, this uh, you can remember as a result so uh, this is uh, uh, another example that we have for a partial order relation and now uh, one note uh, with the which we uh, with which i'll end this lecture that note is that if you have that uh, i'll just explain the note the note goes like this that if you have p is a partially ordered set let's say p is a partially ordered set with respect to the uh, partial order relation less than equal to and if q is any subset of that 
then uh, because uh, less than equal to this less than equal to is a partially ordered relation so it satisfies three properties reflexivity uh, anti symmetry and transitivity so all the three properties are satisfied so in particular all the three properties uh, reflexivity anti symmetry transitivity are satisfied by members of q also with respect to less than equal to which means that uh, uh, q less than equal to this particular uh, set with this particular relation where this less than equal to is same as this less than equal to this is also a po set and uh, in that sense we say that uh, uh, q has induced order from uh, p q has induced order from p or it has uh, inherited order from p so it has induced order from p or it has inherited order from p so every subset uh, if 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 you have that p is a partially ordered set with, with respect to less than equal to then every subset q of p will also be a partially ordered set with respect to this induced order or inherited order so that was uh, uh, one note and uh, but